Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the last years of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Democratic Socialism Lover, also Alexander Yakov Love Lover, but right now we have to talk about a fruitful reunification. With West Siberia's last warlord vanquished, the Free Republic now stretches from Gorky to the river Yeni Sai. It's tempting to make haste and immediately fulfill our preordained right to rule over Russia. Yeah, we must not stray from our primary mandate, that is, the betterment of the peoples whose lives we affect through the Assembly's laws. For now, we shall expend much of the government's attention into integrating our new citizens into the liberties and comforts West Russia enjoys. Wanton conquest can wait until the Republic citizens, old or new, live the fulfilling lives we have promised them, which we probably begin to improve. Better minimum wage, but let's see. And staff the bureaucracy to improve our admin efficiency. Bureaucracy grows as the state does. Should the latter grow twice its size overnight, then the former grows twice also. Both can be said for the Free Republic. At present, now that West Siberia's hours, unfortunately, are sudden and dirt of bureaucrats, has led to an issue in applying Siktivkar's ordinances past the Euro Mountains. In response, President Yakovlev has directed his advisors to recruit more bureaucrats not only from West Russia, but also from West Siberia. The pencil pushers under our old adversaries' employ shall be great use to their new government soon. Also, unlike most campaigns, we can actually potentially peacefully reunify Russia with the Siberian Republic as long as our uh, receptiveness is high enough. And we're already beginning the final unification talks, and our tension is so bad, or so low, we probably like each other a whole bunch. And minorities, let's not talk about minorities now, especially in the first two minutes of the video, but what else do we want here? Ooh, more growth? Hmm, yeah, I'll wait for minorities. Income taxes will increase, and inflation will decrease, and credit, our credit rating will be raised. Wait, we're already acceptable, which is actually better than I thought. I thought we'd be stuck at fair. If we go to intermediate, ooh... Well, we're constructing the wasteland. In truth, we have much to thank for the warlords and petty statelets of which once lorded over West Siberia. Differences in ideology must not blind us from the fact that the governments paid cl close attention to reconstructing their lands until fields could be harvested for crops, mines extracted for ores, and factories to tool for consumer goods. Our tenuously balanced treasuries doubtlessly pleased over the improvements already made, but that does not mean the Republic's new fields. Mines and factories need no more attention, for all that the warlords can make treasure out of nothing. Their shambolic works still pale before those built by a modern mature economy, like the one of ours, for instance. President Yakovlev has thus decided to allocate a portion of our budget towards projects in Russia's new territories at their facilities we brought to power the Siktivkar's finest. If you want to read this, please go right ahead. We'll invite their technical expertise. Our diplomats leave the conference, where the new compatriots in tow in a treaty declaring the Siberian Republic's integration into the West, uh, into the Russian Republic. These two nations, already so intertwined with each other's economy and military and politics, have formalized their unity by sharing a banner name. Though work in adapting the Siberian Republic's laws and administration remains, our unity can no longer be interfered with or interrupted by the other ill-intentioned nations, so ends in peace of uh, Russia's half-century of national humiliation. Oh, we're getting better at efficiency. Look at this. Wow. We got it. We actually did it peacefully. We actually reunified peacefully. Go figure. Um, let's increase it to 20, maybe. And that's what we just get military factories. Nice. Cool. Um, if that's the case, um, we could go to war with Germany. I, I just don't feel like it, I'll be honest. I don't think it, there's really any point to. Um, you know what? Actually, I did convert some of these divisions to helicopter divisions. Uh, oh, they're 20. 20 what, what are they 29 combo with? Do these guys add... Because these guys are 27. Do these guys add combat width? Wait, why do they add combat width? That literally makes no sense. Eh, whatever. I don't, at this point, it doesn't really matter. So if that's a case... Then we can do this. Nikolai Masalov? Very nice. You all... Convert. We'll save some. We'll save some bucks. And I'd love to invade these guys, but it's fine. Whatever. Uh, we're reunify the motherland. We could, but we're not done with the focus tree yet. So, oh wait. Economically speaking, um, do we need a core anything? If you peacefully reunify, you get cores immediately. That's ridiculously awesome and strong. I love that so much. We peacefully reunify before we can even do anything else. Not bad. Not bad whatsoever. Now, the roads, like I said before, are not really worth it. But, but it, the amount of consequence for building roads, because I do like, aesthetically and lore-wise, building a lot of roads to make sure that our citizens can travel across the country if they need to, peacefully and quickly. Um, you get more resources in which you can trade away for more production units, which is always a boon. So, like I said, we could go to war, but eh, I really don't feel like it. Talk about minorities later. Consolidate the energy industry because, we, or energy sector, because we do want more growth. 
Every day, prospectors drill holes in the middle of nowhere, or rather in the middle of West Siberia, and drench themselves in fountains as to keep black gold. Powering cars, factories, and homes worldwide, Earth's ancient acre is in high demand, and the Free Republic is filled with tens, ten hundred billion barrels of it underneath our feet. We would be fools not to exploit them for our benefit. The National Assembly has since approved a bill establishing Gazprom, a state-owned company that shall soon manage particulars of exploiting quite possibly Earth's largest oil reserves of crude oil. Oil wells, pipelines, and employees, whatever they need, we shall provide. The revenue they will generate will more than compensate our treasury's losses a thousandfold. Absolutely. Um, military police, because you can? Because why not? So now, or, eh, that's not too much. So plus, uh, by a billion, it just spiked. And it's gone up too, but whatever. It's fine. Whatever, no one cares. Minus point fi five. That's still really strong. Goodbye, Germany. And then strengthen the social economy. The world war there had been harsh on the Russian people. Many of us still recall the days when entire families succumbed to starvation, sickness, or the de depredations of bandits. Some may even know these unfortunate souls or once belonged to the uh, belonged to their kin. Though much of the era's sufferings are behind us now, the gruesome scars have left behind still lie plain for all to see. One of these scars is poverty, ab abominably high poverty. As a right wise government of all Russia, is our responsibility to uplift its people from their sorry states, and thus we will be assisted by the safety net strong enough to keep every citizen from experiencing the miseries that they and theirs had scant years ago. Uh, oh, we get universal basic income. Okay, a good good pensions. Uh, that's going to cost a lot, ain't it? It's going to cost a pretty, pretty, very pretty penny. But it's worth it for the people. Um, probably poverty gets even better, or gets, I guess, technically lower, but establish a so Russian sovereign wealth fund. Wise men save their money while fools spend their towards, even beyond bankruptcy. Wiser men, however, spend their savings on investments which generate money, ensuring that their total savings grow by the year. So do these men shield themselves from externalities while simultaneously enlarging their fortunes. So, uh, a sovereign wealth fund applies wiser men's logic to a nation state's scale. Managed by financial experts, it receives money from the government and funnels them its principal towards well-earning stocks and bonds. Both principal and interest may be util and utilized for whatever higher purposes the fund is bestowed. For the Free Republic, it's generous influx of all uh, oil money that purpose is securing every registered citizen a comfortable life, even when they are old and infirm. Tertiary schooling, that's not bad. It costs more, but that's fine. Credit rating will be increased, that's awesome. Income taxes increase and deflation will further decrease. Uh oh, that'd be nice. So, a billion, not bad. Minus point four nine. Tertiary is going. Uh, the next movie, Academic Golden Age Board, that's actually really good. Research facilities, I mean, we're already at cutting edge, so we're actually really good. Modern agriculture is actually already the best. Streamline bureaucracy, it could be, be it could be world oil machine, but I'm not going to complain too much about that. Experience, industrial base, could be innovative, but whatever. Actually, you might actually, yeah, we're still going to be able to probably get to innovative industry. Wow. Modern industrial equipment. Eh, we didn't get quite there, but that's alright. And then, we are on professional army too, so. Not bad, bro. So, oh my goodness. Well, there goes UBI. Yeah, UBI. I mean, that's great for poverty. But now we're running a deficit. And that's a pretty flippin' major deficit. I don't know, man. You might have to cut back in other programs, but... Approaching the dawn. On the outskirts of Sigtivkar, a farmer tests his new tractor in the today's harvest. He reaped more wheat than day that day than in a month in his old sickle and trowel. An ump's gray concrete bunkers explodingly give way to housing complexes with windows, curtains, and balconies. Featurings once dismissed for showering for too much enemies, two enemies, showing too much to enemies, that can neither be seen nor grasped. In Gorky, the morning air comes alive with searing heat, a struck hammers, and steel worker's song, where the farmer's father's city, father, ugh, city far, th fathers leave. Its sprawling assembly plants are now out to build task building the task building automobiles that a common man can afford. Slowly but surely, leisurely but successfully, Russia steps out of its perpetual dust. We will feel sunlight's kiss again. Lessons from the Civ Plan. History remembers Nikolai Bukharin as a man of many plans but scarce time. His vision for Russia and her proletariat died with Moscow during the Great Patriotic War, and so we can only speculate at its specifics. Gospel nevertheless gave some of its form in the days of the NEP, namely Siberia's man made transfiguration into an industrial powerhouse, hence named Siberian plans after effects, lay in the winding railroads and teeming industrial zones dotting the region's halves. Much of the mega project documents, blueprints, manifests, progress reports have survived the World Lord Era's complications. We will do the Republic's economy today and tomorrow well by applying the lesson in raw material rich yet industrially poor regions like the Kazan. 
ensure industrial quality. While specializing regions, by the resources they possess, does maximize their use to the national economy, it also unevenly distributes the nation's wealth as a consequence. The end result thereof is a nation comprised of two parts, poverty-riddled cornucopias and towering islands of industrial growth, whose services which needs no elaboration. Thus, the Yakovlev administration's economic advisors have drawn plans to build a network of cities in their factories and skyscrapers, from a con Congress to the Tulsa, the Republic, our results shall prove to the world that the free republic has no place for unequal societies. Oh, it's going to be spiking here. Yeah, that's unsustainable. UBI is unsustainable. It, it just really is. Especially if we were to, like, do that and actually have a normal military. I mean, we could cut out the military, but $3 billion, we'd still have a yearly deficit, so... Hey. Still acceptable, though. Not quite intermediate, though, which is kind of disappointing. A hand to the West. Far beyond the Reich's clutches stand the United States of America. Since its loss in the Second World War, the Western Hemisphere's colossus prevented the Germans and Japanese from exporting their poisonous fascisms to other free countries around the world. Those willing to submit their wills and weather all to the free world's cause join Washington's tight-knit circle of allies, the Organization of Free Nations. Surrounded as it is by existential threats, the free republic must approach America as a fellow free nation. Washington's credit and protection may well secure precarious fortunes throughout this decade's uh, for surprises. And it's got some comments to go through, such as, When a nation's name has the words free, peoples, or democratic in it, it's usually not that thing. Someone says we should play as Bunachenko or Vasily Chiukov in Thousand Week Reich. And someone says the mod's just not working for him. Uh, the mod loads, but just that all countries start with no military factories, but they still have production units like normal. And someone else says that the devs announced that Nova Polska will be removed someday. So. Unfortunate for the Poles. Flying together, though. It's been some time since America welcomed us heartily in the free world. Already, corporations' fruits have ripened in the both ends of the Atlantic. Our Congress tonnage figures have multiplied several magnitudes since, while American industries now partake on Russian materials for the first time in decades. What is it, with what it has offered, our relationship with the superpower seems set in stone. Perhaps now is the right for expanding this relationship further. President of Yakovlev has penned a request for the observer status in the OFM in exchange for granting most favored nation status to its members. This we promise. Russia's wealth shall forever be wedded to freedom. More growth? Less interest rates? I mean, that's nice and all, but... At the current rate we're, we're at, it, it's this is that's not going to be sustainable. Oh, conclusion of the Turkish Kens. In this one, the Legion does a gaming. What? Wait, what? Well, the Kingdom of Spain, Portugal is killing itself. Um, what? Did someone activate Legio? Was it tenth, tenth Legion or something? Who's in America? Is this still MTS? It is. National Conservatives, huh? Mm, there you go. Well, we have to talk about minorities, hope you Ethnic groups such as the Nenets and Selkups have inhabited northern Russia since before Yermak subjugated the Khanate of Sibir. Centuries of oppression under the Tsar followed, then decades under old Bukharin, then until Barbarossa shattered the rusted grip that held their leashes. Pressing circumstances had up until now prevented us from doing more than granting autonomy to the enclaves remain. Operative phase, phrase up until now. Certain members of the National Assembly have proposed legislation that, if passed, would turn the natives' auto autonomies into self-governing protectorates, independent nations in all but name. Whether or not it does pass will decide what place the Republic has for Russia's many non-Russians. Rights for minorities. Do we really want that? Yeah, as long as... Oh, we get more annual growth factors. Nice, but still. And onwards to the future. Four times have our fellow socialists derided the methods we abide. Four again have the results bade them at peace. Personal liberties, comfortable lives, a voice in government, an economy worth calling our own. President Yakov Lev has achieved all that he can pro had promised and more. That he had done so while managing the stresses of reconstruction only amplifies victory, sweet sucker. With the people in locks up behind him, the president seeks a bright future to leave them with. A worthy crown to his party's legacy. And what adornment shines brighter than Russia reunited? If I were to begin to rapidly improve, where are we at? That's not bad, but still. Don't know enough to fight the. Di I mean, we could just slash social spending a whole bunch, so, but. Still. Oh, wait. Oh, we have to wait for the other one to get done first. That's right. But no, we don't. No, we should be. We should have access. Yeah. Oh, do we not get that? Oh, oh, here we are. Okay, it's ON Observer. That makes sense. Are you guys killing each other, actually? Uh, oh, Turkish. Turkestan Legion. 
Rights for minorities. The time has come to answer the important question of minority rights in Russia. The borders of the Republic have long since expanded to encompass a wide range of different peoples, especially in Western Siberia. It's argued that a current system for handling minority voices simply isn't adequate enough and should undergo the wide ranging and regressive reform. However, more conservative figures that believe that minority peoples already enjoy a great deal of rights under our administration and no further reform is necessary. What should we do? It's good enough. Minorities of Russia deserve to be heard. Sure, why not? For this campaign. Man, we really went with the weakest faction here, didn't we? Uh, actually, they have a higher military score than Germany. The economy is the best out of everyone. The Japanese are really ready for war. Uh, they just they just sucked a whole bunch. And their faction really sucks for uh, numbers. Okay. Old Cross is still ongoing, which is fine. I wish we could, I wish we could still take out Kazakhstan. I'd love to do that again, but... Not much you can really do about that. Well, 12 billion in deficit, not great, but whatever. Still minus 0.5 is really nice. Tertiary school, and we did really well, I would say, in this campaign. Really quite well. Even though in the beginning it was a pain in the butt, and I'm going to take you guys' advice. Just like, use cons commands if we have to at this point. Parts of it just, in the beginning, were just too upsetting for me to really want to retry this. Euro guard training is really nice too. Minimum training level, I mean, even though we don't even use. Well, I guess technically we do use helicopters, but at this point, we don't really. Onwards to the future, my friends, and let's reunify Russia. A triumph radio broadcast has echoed out of Russia earlier today. It claims that the motherland has been united by the Russian Free Republic. Once plagued by scandals and fighting and extremism, the Russian Free Republic doomed, seemed doomed to fail. Now, yeah, democracy stretches from our Congos to Kamchatka, which the Republic having overcome uh, the many obstacles in its path to unification. The Republic is... <clears throat> Currently under administration of the People's Democratic Socialist Party, a moderate left-wing faction, led by President Alexander Yakolov, a former official within the Rush West Russian Revolutionary Front. Many so doubt the Republic's stability, but President Yakovlev has assured his citizens that extremism is no longer a threat to Russia. In the end, there is no doubt that the Russian Free Republic shall not be a major focus for the three global superpowers in the center of the Cold War. Democracy in Russia? Well, that's pretty new. Well, if the present were not so horrible and grim, and the future so mysterious and enigmatic, one could go mad, the, go mad with joy to better history. Cool. Death's so really bad. Is that not it? No. Uh, is that seriously not it? Uh, I think that should be it, right? Advanced development phase, which is really nice. 13 billion? Just casually 13 billion in uh, debt, you know. Or deficit, I guess. Really not good. Not good whatsoever, but... I'm gonna assume that's it. Uh... Got field hospitals, I guess. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's supposed to end right there. I think this might be bugged. Oh no, Vaznesinski has been very, very odd. Tell us. I'm not really sure if these guys are supposed to actually be alive or not, but. Flooded streets. Oh! These guys are literally just anarchists. Okay then, I think we're pretty much done here. If you enjoyed the campaign, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great, 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 great. Oh, look at that. He runs the OFN. Rest of your day.